Okay, so today I'd like to talk about the course group training for diphone-based DTS and um, uh, talk about some applications to product and services in Toshiba. Okay, firstly, I'd like to introduce myself. I finished my PhD in 1985. My PhD thesis was about the state space approach to synthesis of a minimum quantization error digital filter without limit cycles. And um, after I finished my PhD, I joined Toshiba. And uh, I have been working in Toshiba uh, Research and Development Center for more than 30 years. Maybe my career is older than you, I think, most of you. <clears throat> and uh, I've worked on speech coding, uh, video coding, DTS, SR, and the spoken dialogue. Yeah, I had worked on many, many things. And uh, today, uh, I'd like to talk about the uh, TTS. And uh, we have two types of TTS systems. One of them is a unit concatenation-based speech synthesis. Uh, this includes closed-loop training for diphone-based TTS and uh, multiple unit selection and fusion method. This multiple unit selection and fusion method is a kind of expansion of diphone-based TTS. And uh, we have another type, the other type, that is statistical uh, parametric speech synthesis. <clears throat> we have developed the speaker and the language adaptation and the cluster adaptive training. These uh, two topics are for um, creating uh, a, a wide variety of speech, uh, synthetic speech in terms of uh, uh, speaker uh, characteristics, uh, speaking styles, and the emotions. <clears throat> And uh, we uh, propose uh, subband-based models, dynamic sinusoidal models, complex Kipsum analysis. These are alternative uh, ways of uh, uh, speech representations to uh, uh, traditional MMCC parameters. Uh, Maybe you know that um, so statistical modeling introduces so-called uh, over uh, smoothing effect, and also the um, param parametric representation of the vocoder introduces uh, distortions in synthetic speech. So uh, we wanted to improve the speech quality for statistical parametric parametric speech synthesis by introducing new types of uh, speech representations. They are subband basis models, uh, dynamic sinusoidal models, and complex capsular analysis. Today, <clears throat> I'd like to uh, explain or we'll talk about uh, this uh, closed loop training and multiple unit selection and fusions. So I don't uh, touch any, uh, anything about statistical speech synthesis except cluster adaptive training. Because uh, the, at the, my, the end of my talk, I'd like to demonstrate some uh, samples created by this one, cluster adaptive training. OK, uh, this is the outline of my talk you will learn about the diphone-based speech synthesis with the PD solar, time domain, pitch synchronous overlap and add. Then uh, you will learn uh, closed-loop training of diphone unit and the pulse degeneration models. After that, I will talk about multiple unit selection and fusion and uh, introduce uh, uh, applications to product and the services. Okay, <clears throat> I will start my talk with the diphone-based speech synthesis with the TD solar. And you will learn here the structure of TTS, uh, three types of speech synthesis. And here I want to define 
what the dipole moment specificity is. But uh, uh, so far, the other uh, lecturers already uh, explained TTS structure and uh, yeah, with the types of speech synthesis, including the unit concatenation based speech synthesis and uh, HMM based or DNA based speech synthesis. So I, I will skip some slides about these things. So uh, I can shorten my presentation and uh, you have more time for discussions at the posters. <clears throat> and then I will talk about the prosodic modification using TD solar and uh, speech quality problems caused by prosodic modification. This is a big issue in diform-based uh, uh, speech synthesis. Okay, uh, maybe I will skip this one. You already know that uh, TTS systems have uh, uh, three major uh, processing parts, text analysis, prosody generation, and the speech synthesis. And uh, there are uh, mm, three types of speech synthesis. Hormone synthesis, unit concatenation based speech synthesis, and statistical parametric speech synthesis. I want to say that uh, so diform based speech synthesis is uh, uh, the uh, one type of speech, uh, unit concatenation based speech synthesis where the just this system has a single inventory for each diform. And when uh, the system has multiple inventory for each diform, that system is called the unit selection based speech synthesis. Okay. And the statistical parametric speech synthesis was already introduced by Hager. And uh, one of them is HMM based and the, the others are deep learning based uh, speech synthesis, such as DNN or RNN or LSTM. Okay, maybe I can skip this one. But uh, just uh, I uh, play uh, one sample that was demonstrated by Professor Kratt at of uh, uh, MIT in uh, 1983. He demonstrated a full text-to-speech synthesis system uh, based on the uh, source filter model. Here, source filter model has a uh, source model and the synthesis model. And the uh, source model has uh, two kinds of uh, uh, excitation signals pulse train uh, separated by pitch period for a voiced part and the white noise for unvoiced part. And then this uh, source uh, model is controlled by UV decision and a pitch F0 and gain. And the synthesis filter is characterized by formant frequencies and their uh, band width and gain. Okay, here is a speech sample demonstrated by Kratt, Professor Kratt. Doesn't work. Text to speech systems are beginning to be applied in many ways, including aid for the handicapped, medical aid, and teaching devices. The first kind of aid to be considered is a talking aid for the locally handicapped. According to the American Speech and Hearing Association, there are over one million people in the United States who are unable to speak for one reason or another. Okay, so the speech is uh, yeah, fairly intelligible, 
but the qualities the but four. <coughs> and uh, so next one is life form based speech synthesis. Uh, this system, this uh, system has uh, just a single inventory for each die form. So according to the phoneme sequence, we select actually uh, retrieve die form unit from the inventory. Then we apply uh, prosodic modification to uh, the die form unit in order to produce uh, speech signals with the uh, uh, yeah, prosody given by prosody generation part. Then we concatenate uh, the modified uh, diphone unit here to produce uh, synthetic speech. Okay, uh, in this case, we have a phoneme sequence like this. This is Japanese, and we uh, retrieve uh, Diphone unit from inventory, this, and concatenate. Then we produce uh, uh, synthetic speech. The unit selection based speech synthesis has multiple inventory with the different spectrum, F0 duration. And the unit selection uh, is uh, done by, uh, done based on target cost and the concatenation cost. High quality, uh, this system produces high quality uh, voice, but needs uh, large data. And the target cost is defined as uh, differences or distances between the target unit and uh, candidate unit in features such as uh, current phoneme, uh, previous or fo following Phonemes, positions of the phoneme in word or in phrases or in sentences, or the position of stress in the word. <clears throat> and the concatenation cost is uh, defined as a distance between previous unit and the current unit in terms of uh, spectrum, uh, F0, and the duration. And uh, Hager just introduced the statistical parametric speech synthesis. So maybe I don't need to explain this part. But uh, here I just want to say that uh, so this uh, statistical parametric speech synthesis is trying is trying to map. Uh, linguistic feature to uh, acoustic uh, features using a statistical models, in this case, uh, HMM. And um, uh, so this system is re deep uh, use, uh, uses um, statistical model instead of uh, uh, Kratos uh, handcrafted rules. Okay, uh, <clears throat> we started a research project of TTS in 1994. Uh, this is um, a form based uh, text-to-speech synthesis system. So we selected form based speech synthesis as the baseline system. Uh, why we selected this uh, diaphragm based speech synthesis? Because we uh, focused on applications to embedded systems at that time, and because uh, uh, the market of GPS navigations or Inca navigations was growing in Japan and other countries, uh, voice user interface was essential for uh, such applications to embedded systems. And uh, Toshiba had uh, good business uh, on semiconductor. So uh, I thought we can enhance uh, Toshiba's semiconductor business uh, by applying uh, TTS or ASR to uh, in-car navigation systems. 
And uh, our research objectives were that uh, we <coughs> create a method to synthesize high quality speech with a very small footprint, less than one megabyte, and the low, comp comp low computational complexity, less than 15 minutes, uh, not minutes, MIPS. So one megabyte memory size and 15 MIPS uh, computation were our objectives. At that time, there are two major uh, speech synthesis methods. One is diphone-based speech synthesis, and the other is unit selection-based speech synthesis. And we selected diphone-based speech synthesis because we wanted to apply TTS to inter navigations, uh, e-dictionaries, or telephone. And these uh, devices, uh, have a small memory, small, requires small uh, footprint and a small computational cost. <clears throat> so we selected this one and uh, we decided to improve the speech quality of diphone based speech synthesis. The, this is um, uh, speech samples of diphone based speech synthesis. Okay, this is, sorry, uh, this is Japanese, but uh, maybe uh, you recognize that um, uh, speech sounds uh, muffled and uh, the uh, F0 is very flat. So the quality is not good. Quality is terrible. And we want to produce uh, this level of speech uh, quality. This was our target. Okay. And uh, so in order to uh, improve the speech quality, I focused on prosodic modification because I believe that uh, prosodic modification caused the problem of speech quality. <clears throat> the diphone-based speech synthesis needs prosodic modification of the diphone unit, as I said, because uh, so this system has just one inventory for uh, diphone, so we need to modify uh, prosody, uh, prosodic information <clears throat> in order to synthesize speech signals that has uh, yeah, prosody uh, generated by the prosodic uh, generation module. And uh, for prosodic modification, we need to modify prosody without uh, distortion or with minimum distortions. So you can imagine that um, when you speed up the recordings to shorten the duration, you end up uh, the higher pitch, or you end up lower pitch when you slow down the recordings. So uh, prosodic modification is not so trivial. <clears throat> we, uh, we need to modify time scale. Uh, okay, we need the time scale modification that modifies the duration without changing the pitch, and we need a pitch scale modification that modifies the pitch without changing its duration. So for this purpose, uh, time domain prosodic uh, no no pitch synchronous overlap and add method was proposed. This method is a signal processing method to perform time scale and pitch scale modification of speech. Uh, we uh, 
isolate each waveforms in the original signals by uh, applying a window to the uh, uh, original signal. Then we perform the modification by allocating the isolated waveforms at the new pitch marks. Then we <coughs> overlap and add to desynthesize the final, final waveform. Here, um, I will explain again. So first, we have periodic signals here. And uh, we apply window, for example, Hunting window, to uh, the, the signal to decompose the signal into pitch waveforms. Then we overlap and add at new pitch marks uh, with, uh, with lower pitch period to increase the pitch uh, frequency like this or uh, put the new pitch marks with uh, longer pitch period to decrease the pitch. And uh, using uh, PD solar, we can modify pitch and duration at the same time. So firstly, we decompose the signal into pitch wave forms then uh, we duplicate or delete each waveforms uh, and uh, put these uh, decomposed pitch waveforms into new uh, pitch marks to desynthesize speech, speech waveforms. And like this, we can modify pitch and the duration. So now I try to explain um, how the uh, uh, pitch modification uh, is, uh, is done in the frequency domain and uh, why the uh, distortion is caused by prosodic modification. So here we have uh, a periodic signal and the periodic signal has a discrete uh, spectrum like this. So this spectrum has uh, values only at uh, harmonic frequencies. So when uh, the pitch is high, this uh, uh, spectrum has very sparse point like this. And uh, prosodic modification is to desample the spectrum envelope at the different harmonic frequencies from the original, like this. So we need to extract the spectrum envelope from a discrete spectrum, but uh, it is almost impossible to extract through a spectrum envelope because it is not guaranteed uh, this uh, discrete spectrum meets the uh, sampling frequency theory. So we have large distortion for high pitch voice and if we have a large modification of F0, we have large distortion. Okay, when we started our research project, the uh, Diphone unit was uh, created by hand crafting. And uh, this is uh, a trial and error process. We have uh, recorded speech uh, samples here. Then we clip a small segment from recorded speech and select a proper unit by hand. Like this, we clip a small segment and evaluate it by synthesize speech signal using a, a clipped uh, segment and listen or evaluate that the quality of uh, synthesized speech. 
And then we try and uh, we try many many times uh, this process, and uh, we create the dipole unit. <coughs> this is labor and the time consuming process. So uh, the dipole uh, speed synthesis had uh, uh, the problems in uh, speech quality and also in uh, dipole unit creation process. So in order to uh, overcome these problems, I, <clears throat> I come up with an idea. This is uh, a closed loop training method of dipole unit. The idea is very simple. Idea is that uh, we I, we formulate the distortion in uh, speech synthesis as an error between original and the synthesized speech. Then we generate a dipole unit that minimizes the distortion. And uh, at that time, I come up with the two methods of closed loop training. The method one, this is called unit selection by closed loop training, and the, the other one is called uh, analytic generation by closed loop training. Okay, so uh, the co key point of this uh, closed loop training is, home ho is the formulation of distortion in speech synthesis. So when I started uh, TTS in 1984, the, uh, the people in research society, diphone based speech synthesis uh, society, say that there is no way to calculate the distortion because uh, TTS is to input text and output waveforms. There is no way to calculate the distortion between different dimensions like the text and uh, uh, the waveforms. So I introduced uh, uh, recorded voice as a um, reference, like this. <coughs> now uh, here, maybe you don't believe that, uh, but uh, <coughs> nobody said th this kind of things at that uh, time. I uh, introduced uh, recorded voice here then I, uh, we extract pitch and the duration information from uh, uh, species data uh, from this one. Then we, I, we apply uh, prosodic modification and uh, concatenation to a candidate. Uh, so that um, the um, uh, pitch and uh, duration uh, matches that of uh, uh, recorded voice. Then now we have here synthesized the speech signal and here recorded uh, speech signal. And we can calculate the distortion as, the, as an error between these two signals. So, uh, method one, this is uh, unit selection by closed loop training. First, we set the candidate, unit candidate, and then we uh, modify prosody of candidate and desynthesize waveforms. Then we calculate the distortion between synthesized and the original waveforms in training data, and then we select Dipole units that minimize the total sum of distortion. This is method one. And uh, analytic generation by closed loop is, uh, is like this. We firstly formulate synthesized waveforms as a function of dipole unit. And the formulate distortion between synthesized and original waveforms then we uh, generate analytically the optimum unit. 
that minimizes the total sum of distortion. This is method two. So ghost loop training is a very simple idea, but very effective to minimize the distortion. And um, here is a block diagram of uh, method one. We have speech, data, speech corpus as uh, training data here. And uh, we set uh, <coughs> candidate unit. Uh, they are part of uh, training data or uh, they are the same as the training, uh, same as speech uh, data in training data. Base. <clears throat> and uh, we extract uh, prosody from uh, the speech signal in training data. Then uh, we apply uh, prosodic modification and concatenation to, uh, to the candidate. Then we calculate the distortion between synthesized speech and uh, original speech. And we select the best one from the candidate as a dipole unit. And as I said, the prosodic modification is done using uh, TD Solar. We decompose uh, periodic signal into pitch, period, pitch waveforms like this and uh, align these uh, pitch waveforms into pitch mark of training data, then overlap and out. And then we get a synthetic speech here. And the distortion is evaluated uh, based on the uh, squared error with normalized power like this. Here we can use any kind of uh, distortion. And this is just one example. And uh, okay, now I I explain uh, unit selection uh, using the course of training in more details. So suppose that we have four uh, candidates for a synthetic unit. Like this one, U1 to U4. And we have uh, training vectors in speech corpus here, R1 to R5. Then we can calculate the error between uh, synthesized speech using U1 and uh, original speech vector R1, like this. And we can calculate the errors uh, for all combinations of uh, unit, uh, the candidate and uh, training vectors, like this. And uh, this is error matrix. And then we calculate the cost. Cost is defined as like this. So for example, if we use, we select just one unit from uh, four candidates, <clears throat> then the error, total error is like this, to sum up the errors uh, on the row. For example, if we use uh, U1, then total, total error is summation of E11 to E15, like this. And uh, if we select two units from uh, four candidates, then <clears throat> Uh, we choose the smaller one. For example, if we select, we select uh, U1 and U2 from uh, this uh, uh, candidate, then we choose smaller error, like this. Okay, next I have an um, example to explain. For example, if we select uh, two unit from uh, the candidate, then, for example, 
if you use U1 and U2, uh, we choose a smaller error like this one uh, among two <coughs> errors. So first we choose uh, one and uh, next we choose this one, next this one and this one and this one. So the total error is uh, calculated like this. <coughs> and uh, the error is 1.8. And um, we calculate the cost for every uh, possible combination of two units from four units. Like this, uh, if we, use, we choose uh, the unit three and the unit four, then the error, the cost is calculated like this. And we select it. <coughs> two unit that uh, give us the min minimum total errors. Okay, this is uh, uh, the uh, gross throughput training method. This is uh, method one, the unit selection using gross loop training. And uh, here, uh, we evaluated uh, this method. And uh, in this case, uh, we used uh, 40 minutes uh, uh, speech data. This is um, uh, uh, one female and one, fem uh, one male and one female speaker's voice. And uh, uh, the, uh, the number of sentences is about 600, just 600 sentences we used. And uh, we created uh, 262 life point units. And uh, we compared uh, closed loop training with open loop training. Open loop training is uh, like this. Uh, we, we have training data like this. And we calculate LSP parameters of all the uh, training data and take an average of uh, all the data, like this one. And we select the synthesis unit. Uh, so whose uh, LSP parameters are the closest to the average? The most, the closest candidate Closest data is used for a speech synthesis unit in this case. This is open loop training. This is the experimental result. So this is preference test result. For female speech, this uh, closed loop training is much better than open loop training method. But uh, uh, there is no significant differences uh, uh, in, case, in the case of male speech. So uh, pitch is high, then the distortion caused by prosodic modification is larger. So uh, for female speech, closed loop training is much better than open loop training. So may I ask uh, why there is such a difference between male and female? Was just this specific uh, female speech or male speech that made the difference? I see that, or it will be um, constant performance independently who is the female and male speaker. Uh, okay, this is just uh, one example of the evaluation. So in this case, uh, so uh, there was no significant difference in for a male speech between closed loop and uh, open loop training. But uh, there are many, many cases where closed loop training is much better than open loop training. Uh, could you explain a little bit what does open loop training refers to? Open loop training? Open loop training is uh, like this. Uh, 
So open loop training means that uh, we select what we create a speech unit that is mostly close to the, um, the center of the training data. And uh, next uh, is analytic generation method. <clears throat> okay, the analytic generation method uh, doesn't assume we have a, a unit candidate, but we don't know what the optimum unit is. So here we have unknown unit U, and uh, so here we want to uh, describe, or we want to formulate prosodic modification and the syn synthetic speech as a function of uh, this u the unknown unit u. Then we can uh, calculate what we can define the distortion between the original speech and the syn synthesized speech here. And we can minimize the distortion to obtain the optimum unit. This is uh, the concept of a crossover training to minimize the distortion. OK, uh, here is an algorithm. We prepare speech segment as uh, training data. We set initial synthetic unit vectors uh, as an initialization, and we partition training vectors into uh, clusters, several clusters, based on the nearest neighbor conditions. And uh, we generate the optimum unit vector that minimizes the distortion in each cluster. And uh, we update the synthesis unit vector, and we repeat the partition and the generation of the optimum unit, and we repeat these steps. Um, I said, uh, diaphragm-based uh, speech synthesis is uh, a system that has only one uh, single unit for diaphragm, but uh, this uh, algorithm shows that uh, we create uh, more than one uh, unit for each diaphragm. Okay, so partition of a uh, training vector is done using these equations. So this is a normal partition in the algorithm, but uh, note that uh, the partition is not based on the uh, distance between uh, the training vector and uh, a centroid of the cluster. But uh, this clustering is, uh, or partition is uh, made based on the di distance between training vector and, in this case, synthesized vector using uh, unit. Okay, now, here we have uh, training vectors uh, shown by uh, X, like this. And the uh, normal clustering algorithm is doing like this. We calculate the, the uh, centroid of the cluster. Then, <clears throat> based on the, uh, this vector and based on the distance between the vector and the centroid, we partition the, the data. But uh, in this case, uh, we partition this uh, training data based on the distance between the vector and synthesized vector using U. This is different from uh, uh, the traditional partitioning algorithm. And the prosodic modification is done by this. 
Okay, I already explained, so I skip this one. <clears throat> and the next step is to formulate the prosodic modification. As I said, the prosodic modification is overlap and add operation of uh, uh, separated pitch waveforms. So this process can be written as a, a matrix operation like this. <clears throat> okay, this uh, matrix shows the uh, overlap and add operation. In this case, uh, we use uh, rectangular window, but actually we use Hanning window or Hanning window, so the coefficient of this matrix are different from uh, unit, unit matrix. <clears throat> All right. Anyway, we can uh, write the uh, uh, overlap and add operation using uh, matrix operation like this. <clears throat> so we can calculate the distortion as an error between the training vector and a synthesized vector, Y. Y is described as a matrix operation between A and U. And here, uh, we introduce uh, the gain to adjust the, the difference in amplitude of uh, synthesized vector and the training vector. And uh, we optimize uh, this uh, G, uh, the uh, gain factor, to minimize the distortion, and we get uh, optimum uh, gain like this. And uh, under this optimum uh, gain condition, <clears throat> we calculate the distortion as a squared error. And uh, so the uh, generation of the optimum unit is very simple. We calculate the distortion over all the training vector like this. And uh, we take partial derivative of E with regard to the unit U and set it to zero. And uh, we get uh, linear equations like this. And uh, so we can obtain the optimum unit U by solving this equation. <coughs> This is um, uh, course of training uh, by analytic way. So here we have uh, evaluation. In this case, we use the 40 minutes long Japanese male and female voices. And uh, we created about 300 dipole units. <clears throat> and uh, we use the prosody uh, generated by a method based on course loop training. I will explain later this one. And uh, here is the result. <clears throat> so um, method two, analytic generation method is uh, much better than the selection based method, me method one. And uh, so there is uh, no meaning uh, in distortion. Uh, so here, <clears throat> when we use uh, just one unit per, per uh, life form, uh, and uh, method one has a, a, a distortion, this is set as one. So this is uh, values, uh, relative values against this one. Okay, and uh, for preference, so analytic method has um, yeah, great, uh, <clears throat> bigger preference than selective method for male and female voices. <clears throat> okay, so here I want to explain how uh, we can, uh, okay, how uh, we can uh, minimize uh, the distortion in synthetic speech. And uh, this is an explanation in the frequency domain. So suppose that we have <coughs> uh, periodic signal, or we have uh, 
uh, speech signals like this that have uh, the same uh, spectrum envelope but the different F0. Then <coughs> this closed loop training is try to extract the most likely spectrum over different F0. So this method exploits the increase of sampling point of spectrum. This is the reason why uh, the closed loop training can improve the speech quality. Okay. So now I will move on to closed loop training of first of the generation model. Maybe I should stop here. Yeah, yeah. if you want. Yeah. <clears throat> Can make a break. Mm -hmm. uh, there are questions. Why? If you have uh, questions. Okay. Then, no. So we no. can uh, make. Uh, okay. So next topic is uh, post generation model. So here I'll show you uh, the generation model and the uh, closed loop training method of F0 counter codebook and how to uh, select the representative vectors, vectors from the codebook. And uh, here is a post generation model. We, <coughs> okay, we created this model as a training uh, as, because we want to train the also the generation uh, using uh, data. So here we have F0 counter codebook, and here is a representative uh, vectors for each type of uh, accent. And uh, we selected the vector from this codebook uh, based on the uh, uh, text feature or linguistic features. Then we apply expansion or con construction to the uh, selected vector according to the duration. Then we move this vector to upward or downward using offset level prediction. And all component of uh, uh, FZL counter codebook and the vector selection and the offset ad adjustment uh, can be trained using data. <clears throat> so we first generate F0 counter codebook using closed loop training, and then we select the vector based on uh, linguistic features, and uh, we predict offset based on grammatical, well known. So linguistic features, we use uh, quantification theory type one model for counter vector selection and offset prediction. Here is uh, F0 counter codebook, and uh, this shows the how to train, how to get the F0 counter codebook. First, we have <coughs> speech database here, and they extract F0 counters, and they set the F0 counter codebook on corpus here. And uh, we set the initial value for our counter codebooks. And uh, using this one, uh, we create uh, prosody according to our prosody generation model uh, in previous a slide here, we apply these operations into the initial value of the code book. The, that operation is uh, vector modification. And we get <coughs> velocity uh, generated by this model. Then we calculate the error between the original counter vector and uh, synthesized vector. And based on the, the, uh, this 
error or distance between these two vectors, we do clustering the uh, training vector. Then we optimize. We get the optimum code book uh, for each cluster. The algorithm is very similar to that of uh, uh, generating the optimum unit for DIFON-based uh, speech synthesis. And uh, finally, we take uh, the approximation error from this uh, process as some training data to model the uh, uh, that estimate the approximation error for uh, uh, vector selection and uh, offset estimation. Of course, uh, here we maybe you can see uh, next flight in, in more details. <clears throat> and uh, clustering is uh, done in this space. So this is uh, the same as uh, uh, unit generation. So we have uh, many uh, training vectors, and uh, we apply clustering to these uh, data based on the distance between uh, these vectors and uh, not centroid, but the synthesized vector using the post degeneration model. And uh, this is uh, the post generation model. So this is uh, the pitch counter of, uh, of a segment. <clears throat> and here is um, a representative vector in the code book C. And this D, this D matrix shows the duration matrix. This is actually the, uh, what they say, time warping the matrix. This, uh, uh, this shows the operation of uh, this one. So the expansion and the contraction of duration. So this operation is described as a time warping. So the, this matrix is time warping matrix. And here, B is offset. Offset of uh, the, the pitch counter. So the, the error or distortion between the original pitch counter and the synthesized pitch counter is defined as uh, a squared error, like this. And uh, so we take the partial derivative of uh, this uh, error uh, with regard to the code book C and set it to zero. Then we can obtain this uh, linear equation. And by solving this equation, we can obtain the optimum uh, representative, uh, representative vector in the code book C. This is the uh, course of training of the code book vector. The concept is the same as that, uh, uh, that of course of training for uh, speech unit. And the next uh, step is to, uh, to create an uh, estimation uh, model to uh, a model that estimate uh, this, uh, the uh, upper approximation error when we use uh, a special vector from the uh, code book. Then <clears throat> here we estimate the error for each vector then we select the best one according to this uh, uh, error, error estimation. Okay, so in, in this case, in the, for this 
uh, approximate, uh, uh, estimation we used approximation, uh, no, 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 qualification theory type one model. And uh, here we have training data from the approximation error corpus obtained through code book training. And the uh, quantification theory type one model has, uh, has this uh, uh, estimation. And uh, here, uh, this is coefficient according to the uh, <coughs> uh, linguistic features. So when linguistic feature, uh, for example, positions of current phrase is uh, first or middle or last, if uh, this uh, linguistic feature is uh, feature matches uh, this category, then we give uh, this coefficient like this. And for other uh, features, we set uh, these coefficients and uh, we estimate the uh, uh, error like this. And uh, we train these uh, coefficients using the training data to minimize the estimated error and actual error. Okay, a little bit complicated. In this training, we have uh, data of approx approximation error when we use the, the optimum uh, you know, representative vector here. And we want to estimate this uh, error from the linguistic features. And we use uh, this error as a training data to model the, the estimation. Like this. And um, in the same way, we estimate the offset level, offset level. In this case, uh, we also use a quantification theory type one model. And here, the training data is the optimum offset level, corpus, obtained to corpus training, uh, no, no, code book training. So I skip the details of this model, but uh, the uh, training method is the same as uh, previous one, like this. And here I have an um, uh, experiment. And uh, in this case, uh, we use uh, about 866 sentences for Japanese uh, male voice. And uh, we <coughs> extract F0 and, um, and do manual correction of F0. Then we created 48 vectors for six accent types. And uh, each accent types have, uh, each accent type of has eight vectors as a representative vector in code book. Okay. And uh, we did a preference test between uh, synthetic speech by proposed method and uh, synthetic speech by conventional method. Conventional method uses a cut, decision tree to, to estimate F0 point for, uh, for uh, a prosodic phrase. <clears throat> and uh, here is um, preference test result. So uh, for naturalness, this uh, proposed method, closed loop training method, has a big uh, preference to the conventional method. And also, the similarity test. But similarity uh, test, uh, the proposed method has big preference to the conventional method. 
And uh, this, is, this shows the, uh, some examples of F-cell counter. Uh, this is original, and uh, uh, this, uh, this line shows the um, pitch counter produced by proposed method. Okay. And uh, here is uh, speech samples. As I demonstrated, uh, diphone-based speech synthesis has very poor quality. But here, here is speech sample created by the closed-loop training. You can listen to this sample. <laughs> This sample is created by closed loop training. So we use just one uh, unit per diaphone. Uh, that means uh, we, this system has just uh, about 300 diaphones. Very small. <clears throat> And again, this was the uh, conventional method. This is Japanese, but uh, maybe you can listen to, you can recognize that the speech quality is much, much better than this one. Of course, the speakers are different, but you can, uh, you can see. Okay, and here are some other samples. Okay, so messages are for in-car navigation systems. Yeah. And this is UK English. In the holiday season, expect congestion on the main road leading to the beaches. Take the first turn left, then, at the second traffic light, turn right and continue on about a hundred yards. Okay, so these samples are created by using the die points with the footprint. 500 kilobyte for Japanese and uh, 800 kilobyte for English. Small footprint, very, very small. <clears throat> and the next, uh, I'd like to talk about the multiple unit selection and the fusion. So firstly, uh, I want to uh, explain our motivation, why we, we developed this method. So we, want, uh, we wanted a scalable system with a different corpus size and uh, voice quality. And uh, this system has a multiple uh, unit selection part and the units fusion into one diaphone. And the other uh, process is the same as diaphone-based species synthesis. So this part is just uh, different from uh, uh, the previous one. <clears throat> so uh, we can change the number of units to be fused depending on the uh, copper size. If uh, uh, copper size is big, then we select uh, just a few, few units, for example, two or three, then few Use them into one diaphone unit. But if uh, the speech corpus size is small, then we select uh, maybe 10, 10 units, then fuse into one. So this uh, make the speech sample, synthetic speech sample, more stable. 
This is the motivation. How, how we can do this? How we select the multiple uh, speech unit and fuse into one. This, uh, the unit selection is the same as uh, the, that of uh, un unit selection type speech synthesis. So firstly, uh, we do pre-selection by target cost, then search for the best, best path based on the target cost and the concatenation cost, like this. So we selected the, uh, the best path using uh, uh, the target cost and the concatenation cost, then select uh, a number of units based on the best path and the uh, target cost and the concatenation cost between uh, this path. So once we uh, find the best path, then we select multiple unit based on the uh, target cost between this unit and others, and also concatenation cost between, for example, this one and the previous, uh, the best unit. Okay, like this. Then, uh, so a unit fusion is done like this. <clears throat> so we, uh, we fuse uh, several units into one. Then uh, after that, uh, we uh, apply overlap and add process. Uh, to synthesize the speech signal for uh, voiced part. For unvoiced part, we just uh, uh, apply uh, unit concatenation. Okay, so unit fusion is done like this. We select, uh, for example, three units, then uh, we compose uh, the periodic signal into pitch waveforms like this. Then we uh, normalize the duration and we adjust the phase of each uh, uh, pitch waveforms like this. Then we take an ab average. We do averaging operation onto this uh, to these uh, pitch waveforms and get fused unit. Average by sample. Okay. Average by sample by sample or frame yeah, by Yeah, average by sample by sample, yes. And here is uh, speech samples created by this method. And in this case, we use the uh, uh, speech corpus uh, led by uh, small, um, maybe elementary school girls and the boy. Okay, this is also Japanese, but uh, you can listen to the, the quality of the uh, spe synthetic speech. Ah, Maybe too, too loud. So like this. Uh, and next one, okay. Uh, this is uh, the almost the end of this presentation. Next, uh, I talk about the product and the services using TTS. 
and uh, I demonstrate some samples. Do you have any questions? I have one uh, regarding the codebook for English. Was it uh, more varied or less varied than Japanese? Because in Japan you have these accents and F zero uh, modeling of. Mm, it's a yeah good question, but um, I'm not an expert of language. But yeah, I think uh, English has more variations of uh, F zero counter. And also more variations of unit, in terms of units. So, uh, like this, uh, or English unit has a bigger uh, footprint. And the second question, um, the, the the waveform representation was simply uh, some kind of uh, row. Uh, I mean, rows uh, samples or or some kind of coding. Uh, just a row samples. Yes. Okay, so we applied the TTS to yeah, mainly three kinds of applications, like um, human machine interface, uh, including in-car navigation systems, home appliances like uh, TVs, or, or air conditioners, and fridge, uh, and e-book readers. And uh, we can use um, TTS for content creation services. So this content creation is used for uh, creating the contents for e-learning or text for education. And uh, there are many uh, smartphone applications using TTS. And uh, so as a business in Toshiba, we have a middleware licensing business to navigation manufacturers or car navigation, uh, no, no, car manufacturers or game manufacturers or e-dictionaries or, t or telephone. And uh, we apply TTS to Toshiba product like a TV, fridge, or others, home appliances and uh, laptop. You see, and we have uh, a Microsoft, uh, no, no, microprocessor embedded with uh, TTS and SR middleware. Another type, uh, Toshiba has uh, semiconductor chips for these devices, and the softwares or content creation services, for example, elevator or yeah, international internet services, uh, e-learning contents, or others. <coughs> and um, first, I uh, introduced uh, uh, Toshiba's uh, TTS closed loop uh, training method to car manufacturers, and uh, the uh, car manufacturer famous car manufacturer adopted uh, Toshiba's TTS in 1999. And at that time, we provided uh, TTS middleware to four vendors. And these four vendors had 38% of market share in Japanese uh, in-car navigation systems. And then this market share uh, increased gradually or dramatically. So in two years, the market share grows, grow, grew to about 72%. And in 2006, uh, Toshiba's TTS uh, was used in uh, 90, about 95% of Inca navigations in Japanese market. And um, course loop training, so diaphone based speech synthesis is old technology, but uh, still, that technology still survived the competition against uh, HMM synthesis and the other uh, types of speech synthesis. 
And uh, this method is still used in Inca navigations and others, e-dictionaries and others. And still we have a, a big market share, about 80 to 85 percent. And uh, also we have semiconductor chip used in Inca operation, Inca uh, navigations and for, uh, for making hands-on free call while driving. And this is a chipset of uh, Bluetooth chip and the microprocessor. The microprocessor has functions of uh, SR, TTS, and graphene to phoneme translation. And uh, so for SR, this is very small vocabulary size uh, speech recognition. Uh, this is used in the car. And also, uh, we created a website to open the TTS voice creation to public. Uh, this was done uh, five years ago. Currently, uh, we stopped the service. <clears throat> and um, at the website, we provided a pipeline system to use us to create new voices. voices. <laughs> So uh, anyone can uh, upload a recorded voice of about 100 sentences, small data, just 100 sentences. And the uh, process uh, create the um, uh, iPhone units. <clears throat> and uh, this process complete in one hour. So anyone can get a uh, synthetic speech uh, in one hour after uploaded, uploading his or her voice to the uh, website. And uh, we created more than 800 voices using uh, the user's voice. Here is one example. This is a recorded voice by a user using uh, his own recording voice, a uh, recording device. Uh, a little bit noisy, uh, just uh, maybe this is a um, problem of the audio system. This is uh, uh, original speech. And uh, this is synthesized speech. The similarity is uh, different. That's so good. But quality is not so bad. So these uh, diphones are created by just 100 sentences. And uh, we have more than uh, 50 speakers' voice for professional use. And uh, this, uh, they are uh, some samples like this. Well, we have a different speaking style, for example. And this is conventional, uh, no, no, conversational style. That is like this. And um, as I said, uh, uh, our system has a scalability 
uh, in terms of the size of the footprint and the speech quality. So like this, if you use uh, the uh, diphones with uh, 2.5 megabyte footprint, then the quality is like this. And uh, if we have a big speech corpus, then the quality is improved. So the these samples uh, are produced by just one system. And the MOS, I'm not sure, but uh, about 3.2 to 3.6 or 7. And uh, this year, we started a new cloud service of media processing. And this includes content creation using TTS, transcription service using ASR, speech-to-speech -speech translation applications, and the spoken dialogue. We are providing these uh, functions to customers. <clears throat> and uh, here is a website you can access. But uh, sorry, uh, this is Japanese. Like this. Now this is online, so um, we can input uh, any text like here, such like uh... Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Like this. Um, so, okay, now I'm in Crete and uh, I'm demonstrating in summer school. The meaning is this. And, uh, okay, great. Like this. And uh, of course, uh, we, we can change the speaker and the change speed and change the speaking style, like this. OK, this is uh, angry voice. OK. And the next uh, demonstration is uh, using uh, uh, cluster adaptive training based uh, statistical speech synthesis. So I will explain a little bit uh, cat based cluster adaptive training based statistical models. So we train cluster uh, models using cluster adaptive training. And uh, in this model, <clears throat> the mean of the distribution are defined as a linear combination of P clusters like this. We have uh, you know, uh, different clusters, and each cluster has a uh, different uh, decision tree for uh, regression. And uh, combining the, the mean vectors from, each, uh, from uh, different clusters, we can create uh, mean vectors like this. <clears throat> And so in this case, um, uh, cat weight, this lambda, uh, uh, represent continuous voice space. Voice space. And, um, and the good thing of a cat model 
is that uh, unlike eigenvoice models, cat doesn't need to force the cluster to be orthogonal. And the decision tree can be independent. So we can uh, combine different uh, decision trees to create more context uh, efficiently, like this. <clears throat> And uh, so we can control voice character using cat weights, like this. So in this case, we have average voice uh, model, lambda zero, and uh, as uh, uh, difference between the uh, uh, cluster models and average voice model, we can control the uh, characteristics of voice uh, by changing the weight. Okay, uh, this is uh, uh, this is the last demo. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your attention. <clears throat>